This week's episode of Bonus Questions is brought to you by Patreon. Thank you to all our patrons, as always, for coming on and sending our questions. We have, I know we asked you for a double dose this week because I asked you for questions for Geddes. For the crack, we should ask you the questions Geddes got. <laughs> but no, we're going to stick with the original. So yes, Mr. McCann is back with us. So straight in. Uh, first up, a couple, these are first two actually, just statements. Uh, looking forward to hearing you, lads. Thank you. It's right. very kind. And then the other one said both are excellent guests, so it's win win. So they were happy enough for oh, the that's change. Lovely. Right. Isn't it? Yeah, you, you're yeah. all here through a bunch of sweet art. They're sweet wee bastards, a whole lot of love. Uh, right, well, boys, I finally quit the vapes, hopefully for good this time. Just wondering if either of you have quit a bad habit and what your coping mechanisms were. I'm currently eating like fucking going through a pack of gum a day. I've heard that. I've heard if you quit the fucking vape and you're flat out on the you know, delicious treats after. That's the same as smoking. Uh, cigarettes, if you're like, I, when I went off them, it was brutal. I'd actually like to hear from this person. Contact me directly and tell me how you did it. And also, tell me if when you did it, you were like sick for two weeks. Yeah, that's not good. Tried, you told me that, and that's not a good thing. See, I don't that know. That makes though, me think them vapes maybe aren't <laughs> as healthy as people that are on there. I don't know if it's a thing of I got a dose the same time I quit vaping. Or if I got a dose because I quit vaping. But the th- first three days, you know, you're all like jittery and all because you don't have it. And then the fourth day, I got like struck down with like a bad old dose. Mm-hmm. I felt like fucking Amy Winehouse. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, I'd like to hear from that person if that's what happened. Bad habits, so have I quit a bad habit or have I invited them <laughs> into mm-hmm. my life? I don't take t- sugar in my tea. That's good. It's a bad habit to have. Do you have. use the stevia? No, I don't. I don't use anything. Now. Um, but yeah, that's not really a habit. I such. used to drink BPM every day. I cut that. I used to drink a bottle of BPM every day before mm. school. I was one of them fat cunts. Had the it BPM seems to in be the a blazer youth, pocket. It seems to be a youth thing with BPM. Yeah, because I got tits. Yeah, well, I, I was going to say my daughter is. I don't know how that's how fast she got tits, but <laughs> that she uh, <laughs> she would have been a BPM nonstop, and then it's kind of phased out now, and it's now it's yeah iced lattes and all this. You know, whatever the well, new craze yeah. is, like, it seems like a, it seems like a by uh, by age, your certain age. I don't know when they get to my level of fucking four shot lattes, but no, uh, I remember one time like just going with you to McDonald's and you ordering a coffee, and I was like, I have the same, and you were like, I don't know if you like it. <laughs> and I was like, no, oh, fuck's sake, what are, you, what are you fucking, you know, I'll take the coffee as well. And I swear to God, sir, I felt like I took, I took the limitless drug. <laughs> 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 I swear to fuck, eh? Cleaning the house and all. And I suppose you need something to like get you another side of the reefer. Well, like, that's what, I think, it, I think they balance themselves out. I think yeah. that's a good thing, yeah. Um, I don't know any other bad habits. I mean, I don't know. Biting my nails. I'm still in that group. Uh, main reasons for my teeth. It was causing serious damages to my teeth. I was chipping my teeth. Ah, I see. By biting my nails. Time. I have chippy old teeth. And uh, I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I stopped that. Uh, I stopped that just for the sake of I'm not going to spend money on getting teeth sorted and then fucking break them again. Yeah. By biting your nails. So uh, yeah, I haven't bit my nails now in a long time. I have to take out a fucking nail clipper like a fucking. Big Ooh, okay. Fa- like, like a big fanny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. How straight are you when you think fucking a nail clipper or something that's class is feminine? Yeah, it's so funny to slag your mates for basic hygiene. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Who will be the first comedian from Northern Ireland to be on Rogan? Oh, fuck. It's got to be Geddes or Shane, isn't it? It, ha- it should be Geddes. It should be Geddes. If you were talking about who naturally fits in yeah, there. it should be Gaddis. But it's probably going to be Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Shane's just got a better team behind him. Yeah. Uh, Does Rogan drink tea? <laughs> <laughs> Might be uh, DMT with me. DMT. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I wouldn't pay <laughs> to see Shane Todd and DMT. <laughs> Holy fuck, that would be amazing. That would be fucking oh, oh fuck absolute hell class. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I think Gettys would be the the natural. He'd be great because you know if if you're having someone from like the well, they're pretty much very similar, aren't they? I mean, they are, right? But like, if you're having someone from like the Irish circuit, I feel like you know, calm with the comedy club and all, starting that up, like yeah. there'd be so much to 
to, to give to Rogan because it would be his introduction probably to the Irish scene in general. Yeah, you know. So, but I mean, they're, they're uh, when I say similar, I mean their uh, their their careers are quite similar. Oh, both highly accomplished yeah, comics. Yeah, 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 for yeah. Sure. but also then trailblazing when it comes to podcasts, you know, Absolutely. merchandise, all that sort of stuff. There's and then the comedy club and all that sort of thing. So I think they, he would be the natural link. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be Shane. So uh, next up, what Oma establishment do you miss the most? Campar, Old McDonald's, or Shea Manu? Campar. I have to I say. I used to fucking love Campar. I did love a Campar. So, Campar was a Malaysian uh, slash Chinese restaurant uh, owned by Philip and Jenny, two legends. Yeah. Um, and Malaysian chicken balls. Couldn't oh. them. Uh, but they used to do... What I love about Campar, right, was they did a buffet. They did a lunch buffet. But unlike every other Chinese buffet that I've ever been to, which is, you know, you know what you're getting. It's yeah. like a quantity over quality thing, yeah. yada, yada, yada. Campar would do six dishes, but they were all fucking unbelievable, yep. and they were all you can eat, you know. And they were all things that they definitely served on the menu at night time. You yeah. know, it was not like oh, we put their shit stuff out during the day. Yeah. Uh, their uh, the crispy duck pancakes were fucking unreal. Would you stop nobody me? has ever, nobody has replaced that now. Nobody no. has come to that, that level yet. No. Uh, oh, McDonald's now. Would would you wouldn't really be no McDonald's? I, I remember just their gravy chips. They were the, like, that the, was something that everyone always talked about. Chip gravy stuffing was unreal. Now, tell me this, McCann, right? Because I got slagged in Edinburgh a couple of years ago with uh, chatting to a couple of people from Belfast who, one of them used to live in Oma, and she was slagging life me, going, what is it with you fucking Oma people and stuffing on chips? And oh, like, sir. Is that not a... Is that not what you do everywhere? And they're like, no, we don't do it in Belfast. I was like, hey, what? Well, first of all, don't make her make you feel like the weird one. She's the uncultured one. Actually, what she said to me was, you, you, this is the word she used, when you put Herbie bread on chips. And I went, I never called it that before. It's fucking stuffing. Uh, but also, I, I genuinely thought it was the a... problem is? No, I, I just, I was shocked. Because it's such a, a norm for us. Yeah. I thought it was the same everywhere. Yeah. So if, uh, you would know more than me. If you went to Chipping Belfast, could you get a chip gravy stuff on? I no, I never, never got it. But would you? I don't you, know if it's. I don't know if it's. A can thing you see it in the menu? Accessible, but like I've never had it in Belfast. To be fair. Well, the people always laugh at me because I've never had a pasty. Um, I don't know what they are. I don't know. Have you ever had one? They're alright, like. Right. All right. So then our listeners are like, "Has Connor had a pasty yet?" And I'm like, "No, because I've seen them." Well, after I didn't know what they were, and I went to look, I was like, all oh, them things? Uh, I wouldn't want them. They're good, like, but they're not, like, life-changing. They're not, like, yeah. added to the repertoire, you know? But if you haven't had chip gravy stuffing, that is life-changing. Yeah. Colmore Diners. Oh, sir. Sir, do you know It's so funny about the Colmore so Diner. They have a chef's recommendations. Of course they do. And it's two things. It's the homemade chicken It's a small curry. fry or a large fry. And I- <laughs> it's literally the curry and the chip pea stuffing. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> so the chef himself is like, here, this is my best gear. Yeah, that's all I can is. do. This the is all I can do. is kind of fucking, you know, middling of the road, but you want me to really blow the tits off you? <laughs> get the chips, peas and stuff. Can't do the peas now. Can't have it. No? No, not a pea no, man. I like them. Not a pea man. Let us know if that is the case. I, I genuinely, and this, I forgot to ever mention to Mickey to ask him, is it something I'm allergic? But I know, uh, just reminded me there about old McDonald's. There, there's there's definitely something, the slag and I got that night, and I was, my mind was blown that this wasn't a, a, across the whole island, let alone just the north. I thought, it just seemed like such a staple of Yeah, there's a lot of shit. Cuisine, like, there's yeah. a lot of stuff like that over here where you kind of assume that everywhere does it. Hmm. Like even, uh, like a taco chip, mm-hmm. you know, over here, that would just be a bit of taco sauce on yeah. chips. Well, it is, like I'm abroad in that one time. I think it was Glasgow, and the can't put half a lasagna on top of the chips. Aye, the mince You know what I mean? Yeah. So I get it, but maybe we're in the wrong way. The fuck knows? But that, I would have <clears throat> my first version of a taco chip would have had the mince on it, like I would have been the version I would have yeah. first seen. Like, but then in recent years, kind of like when sweet chili came in, all of a sudden taco sauce came in, and everybody went mental for it. That was the real pandemic. When oh. Sweet chili first came to these parts. Ah, uh, it was a. Didn't uh, know what to do, but they're putting never. <laughs> oh Jesus! Putting cornflakes on it. <laughs> now it's the air fryer. Oh, don't chat to me about a fucking air fryer. Then I go and buy a ninja one last week, and I have, I haven't stopped using it. Sorry. I'm eating, I'm eating for no reason, just to cook something. I did a boiled egg in it the other day. No, how can it oh, be? I know. How, how, how yeah. can it be boiled if it's not in any water? Well, I tell you, fuck it was perfect. Too. I thought we, I thought we peaked as a society with the George Foreman. 
I didn't think you'd get much better. But we were only fairness. taking baby steps. Ah, we only fucking. We didn't know what was happening. I don't, it scares me. What's next? I don't know. I think then you know we're going to end up just having our own chefs. Yeah, there'll be an AI robot. You say, "Give me a strong enough." Yeah. And he'll go on and, yeah. and then I'll be at then. Unreal. Bring it on. And then they pull you off after dinner. You know what I mean? Because like they'll do everything. Yeah. Like you really, I don't know. Just can't wait. Strong enough in a sock job. Hey. <laughs> That's a queer Thursday. The future's bright. <laughs> Uh, right, there's been talk on the NA comedy uh, podcast scene of a coconut finger hot dog. Was in Glasgow last week and seen a sausage turnover in m and I have to admit, it worked. Question, though, is what's the best combination of food that shouldn't work but does? Chip gravy stuffing. <laughs> well, to me, that sounds like it should work. I know. Like, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's but then anyway, that's, that's our programming, isn't it? Chicken and waffles. That was something that I was like, I hear. You fucking mental mm-hmm. American bastards. But... It actually is banging. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very good. Very good. Pancakes and bacon. Very good. Bacon and maple syrup. Great. Quite a fucking revelation. Um, what's it's and Twix? You've lost me. You haven't lived. What's it dust combined with no, no, no. Twix? Actual what's it's. So take two or three what's it's in the mouth, bite a Twix, mix it up. Game changer. Sorry. Change your life, sir. Change your. You'd know you're man, right? Change. You couldn't your be life. Content- <laughs> You couldn't be doing that as a single man. <laughs> what? What a what a cocktail for your breath, that is. Oh, absolutely, I. That's so funny. Try, I don't give a fuck with breath smells. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what you know you're man, right? I'm not looking for anything. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, working in the bar in London, and the Jamaican guys used to come in, and the Jamaican boys were always mad about the uh, about stout, but only bottled stout. They didn't. Why want, is that? Uh, it's just that's what they sell in Jamaica is always the bottled stuff. So okay. um, when they come over here, they'll drink away that, but they don't want the pints, they don't want draft, they want the bottles. But there was one guy, one Jamaican fellow, that kept coming in all the time, and he <laughs> he would do the same bottle of stout. He'd get the bottle of stout, he'd pour it into the glass, and then he'd get a packet of salted peanuts and pour them in. And Sorry. I was like, what? And he was like, you have to try it. And I have to say, it was fucking rotten. <laughs> <laughs> but again, he, and then the last mouthful was all the peanuts of all the stout. I was like, what the fuck? You ever done salt and chocolate milk? Yes. Yeah, nice. It is, actually. It's a yeah. wee Mexican That's number. So we, so we, we, uh... A wee quest for the palate. Yeah, well, I actually don't know if it was Mexican, but the pa- fella that introduced me to it was a Mexican descent, so I just assumed it was from his culture. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, heard yeah. it was a bit of a racism, like. <laughs> right, hi lads. Question for you both: If you appeared on an NA comedian's come down with me, who would you invite, and what would your three courses be? Oh, you'd have to have Bartlett there. Yeah. Because there's always one drunken mess. Yeah. Always one. He'll eat anything too. And he'll no, he won't. Really? Oh, if he's drunk? He is the fussiest bastard. You Mickey know? a fussy eater? Mickey is fucking... He is... What is our Nev has learned over the last month. Really? You should, no, this is, this is for the crack, right? He'll not listen to this, so that's all right. Next time you sit down with Mickey, get a big bowl of coleslaw. He hates coleslaw? And eat the coleslaw in front of him. And watch what happens. I told McCarney that the night before the boxing. We went to Nando's and Mickey went to the toilet. I said, order coleslaw. He goes, I don't like coleslaw. I fucking order coleslaw. And he came in the coleslaw and Mickey just locked it up. And they looked at me and went, you fucking told him. And yeah, I went, no, I don't tell him anything. McCarney started pacing the coleslaw over his gloves, his boxing gloves and all. <laughs> we had coleslaw that day. It was great. <laughs> it was the best coleslaw ever. Uh, yeah. And he actually, one day in Jack's, he actually said to me, he goes, do you notice how well I did? I didn't, like, vomit when you were eating that coleslaw. Yeah, that's hilarious. So he has that. He has so many other things. He can't he can't deal with the smell of eggs. He can't deal with egg and onion. There's, I don't know. I've lost count of how many things he can't that's so deal funny. with, like, which is fucking mental. Considering the amount of shit he puts down his throat. Yeah. Uh, so who would you um, who would you invite? Uh, I would have yourself on. So Pretty say me, man. you, Mickey, and, and Geddes. Mm-hmm. Right. We'll just put that out. And uh, McCarney. We we'll mm-hmm. have to put. have to have a bit of rural fit around it. What will we be serving? What would your three courses be? Well, I I can only make like a few dishes. <laughs> But I but will say, dishes. I make two things very well. Okay. But one of them is a breakfast item, so there's no point serving that in mm-hmm. the dawn and night. Um, but the other thing 
that I make very well is this like, it's like a, ah, fuck, what's the name of it now? It's like a miso mushroom pasta, mm -hmm. right? So I'd serve that, mm -hmm. you know, no meat or anything. So it might be a wee bit controversial with the fellas that we've got, mm -hmm. but I'd make up for it by doing as a starter. The fuck would I make as a starter? 16 inch steak. No, I'd probably just... <laughs> <laughs> just to make up for the fact. I'd probably just buy a load of stuffed mice and throw it in there for yeah, you see. Finger buffet? Down. Nah, no good. And then dessert. C can you do come down with me if you're using air fryer? Or do you have to make it? Do you have well, to make, make it? Well, I mean, technically they're using ovens, so the air fryer's just an oven, so it's the same thing. You know. I will then, finger buffet for starters. Bring out the miso mushroom, must be my time to shine. And then for dessert. Fuck, what can I make dessert way, is I? Cornetto. Well, that's about there. <laughs> Beyond your budget. For the Vianetta. Yeah. Between, four, between the five of us. A bit of coriander and some for presentation. <laughs> it's Malaysian. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the chocolate milk. Right. It's all the chocolate milk. I, um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, where do you buy miso, by the way? I just bought it in the Tesco. I, but you can get it locally, can you? I don't seen... know. I I only made it in London because I was forced to cook. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, because I I never made it here. I was looking through uh, some some guys. Do you know some guy locally has like uh, is now fucking massively famous with his air fryer book. Yeah, I have the book. Board of lunch. Board of lunch. So she bought it the other day, and I was like, oh, I'll take a look through it. And I was looking through it, and it was all this miso. I was like, where the fuck did I get miso from? Yeah. I've never had the luck for it before, so never just when you mentioned it there now. I thought, well, oh, I got it in Tasco. There was a Tasco like right beside our house. Right. So but it was London, so I, yeah, but I'm, I don't know if there's going to be one. All we have is Asda, obviously, so yeah. uh, we'll have to check that out. Uh, but I, I know I can buy it online and buy it in a, an I Asian I also remember shop, asking but. where the miso was mm -hmm. in the Tesco, and the guy was trying his best to not say Asian. <laughs> he was like, it's in the uh, Oriental section. In the horny section? <laughs> what did they say that? Me so. Uh, <laughs> Stop. Yeah, take it right at me. Love you long time, <laughs> and then you can't miss it. <laughs> Fuck, focus a bit, baby. Well, uh, anyway, keep going. <laughs> What's the next question? The love you long time section is actually a slow cooker section. <laughs> Uh, right. <laughs> what will my three courses be? Garlic mushrooms to start. Nice. That's but a not, strong. Not, not the breaded ones now. Yeah. Okay. That would be my own recipe. And then I have uh, whatever you want, basically, I would do. But I could do like uh, my the one that me and Emer and I would ask for is the chicken with a white wine, creamy garlic sauce, and pasta, linguine. Or not linguine, tagatelli. Right. Okay. Very bistro here. I like this. Right, and uh, then, what will be the dessert? Dessert wise, you know what I make? We can. You make? I make this, right? So I don't make the croissants. You have to buy them in, right? Mm -hmm. But clementine oranges. Right? Inside the uh, croissant uh -huh. with white chocolate. Grated over the top of the oranges, right? Close over the croissant. Dip it in cream and egg, right? The, the actual croissant. And bake it for like 20 minutes. My fucking God. I'm hard. You should try that shit. That I got amazing. that. That was a recipe I stole off Ready City Cook one time. About 15 years ago. So you get that shit at the dark web? Or <laughs> the fuck you get that? Uh, it's fucking unreal. And the odd that time they'll, I'll get asked for that at Christmas time. Because that's when Clementine's were born. I don't know fucking. By the way. Uh, that's my three courses. I don't know what Mickey would make. It definitely would be no coleslaw anyway. <laughs> it would probably be a fucking. Uh, he uh, makes a good chili. Uh, so I hear. I've never had it, but uh, I? I would say it's probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mickey's tells you he makes these things, but I don't know if it actually does or not. Uh, I I would imagine it could be like a wine tasting course for three courses. Yeah, <laughs> it's all box <bog> fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right, uh, evening gents, Connor, how's life been opening for the Murph? Are you missing Mick, or are you enjoying the vape-free quiet time? I don't have any vape-free quiet, quiet time, because that can't say it now, you've got a vape at it. Uh, <clears throat> how's life been opening for Murph? Murph's been great. Um, we did Letter Kenny and Strabane there the weekend, which was tough work, but uh, we got there. 
Uh, Mr. Sofa, we're calling you Mr. Sofa now. What was some of your favourite eateries in the States and how did the Bomb Squad pod start up? Have a good one, lads. Right, so we covered the Bomb Squad one, so more importantly, what were the favourite eateries in the States? Do you know what I'll say to you before we get on to the favourite ones, right? Do you know, and I, I'm going to try it again this time I go over because I feel like maybe I had a bad experience. You know the way everyone talks about how fucking Texas, their barbecue's unbelievable, blow yeah. that clean off you? It's all right. No way. Like what I went to, yeah. and it was like one of the most famous ones, that was all right. Oh, fuck off. It was dead on. I think we're spoiled with the meat quality over here. Well, that is the thing. We don't realize how good our meat is yet. So then whenever we go out there and, and we have something, like I got like this like pulled pork and like beef brisket kind of like combo thing. And then a bad sign is when the sides steal the show. Right, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And the, the dessert was one of the best desserts I ever had. It was a banana pudding. Mm. It was fucking unbelievable. Lovely. Um, My favorite eateries in the States, well, usually when I go, I'm on a bit of a budget. So what I like to do is I go to the bodegas. They are a godsend. Bodegas is basically a center of Delhi. Aye. But everything is like very, very cheap and monster portions and very, very tasty. Like some of the best sandwiches I've had in my life. I went into a New York bodega <laughs> to get a sausage and egg McMuffin. Uh-huh. Basically. Uh-huh. They made it their but version it's like of it. Boutique. But it's, it's but it's their version and it was on it was the best. Gorgeous. Version, unbelievable. Fucking great. Really unbelievable. And if you make friends with the bodega guy, they will give you a wee bit of friendly discount here and there. You know? I would fucking know rightly, boys. I swear to God, you know you're I mean? the worst cunt in the world. You're going in there do the bit of the fiddly diddly day. You know what I mean? All right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, boy. Top of the morning all to you, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my granddad was Finn McCool. <laughs> um, <laughs> get a free fully cheese stick. Uh, right. I'm not sure Mickey Zanoz. He shifted a few pounds and his tune scenery like a motherfucker and on blue lights as Jerry Cliff. <laughs> there you are. I have much blue lights yet, but obviously there's a Mickey lookalike on it. Uh, right. Looking forward to seeing Arn at the waterfront in June. Thank you, you for buying a ticket. Are you planning on recording it to put it up online or anything? The comedy scene here is booming and I am so fucking here for it. What a lovely person. Emily, um, Emily's a fucking legend. That's what she is. I don't, I don't plan it. Only reason being that... Me, personally, I think if I'm going to record something, I'd like it to be in a club. Same as that, man. You know what I mean? I want to record a show in Dailies. I'd love to record a show in Laveries. What it, what it would actually mm. be, like, if, if, we're, if we're manifesting here, if we're talking, like, proper dream type shit, what I would love to do is record a... I don't want to call it a special, because that feels like something mm. that you'd say if you're actually, you know, not living at your ma's house. Um, <laughs> I would like to record... <laughs> I would like to record a video where basically it starts off and I do a set in a comedy club in New York and put together the best bits of that. And then within, fo- within the same 48 hour timeline, get the plane to Dublin, go to Lab Race, record a set there and mush the two of them together. Mm. I'd love to do that. I think that'd be pretty cool. That's pretty, uh, nobody's done that before. No. I like that. There you are. You heard it here first. Uh, right, <clears throat> I don't vote because I think they're all sneaky, backhanded fuckers. But if you were to run, how would you get me to vote for you? I'd legalize weed for a start. <laughs> you know, would be like straight. <laughs> Item one on the agenda, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I would imprison all politicians, maybe. That would get me to vote for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lock them up. Lock them up, the fuck. Uh, I don't know. What would your manifesto be? It'd be terrible. It would be like, you'd read it and go, this cunt was just looking for... you know, Like, I would do something stupid, like... You'd never pay for... Like, you'd never pay for Bushmill sauce ever. That's just a, a free thing. Yeah, that's just the way you want it. I would make it the you. free bread at the table. Any restaurant you want to. Excellent. Um, we bring back Extra Vision. Yeah. We bring that back. Yep. Um, it was a it was a social glue. It was. Extra Vision, that's what that was. It was. Kids There's these n- days don't know. Don't know. And many couples don't know. Many modern couples don't realize what the fight was like. You Did you? Extra Vision, they have, they have knows the crack. Were you in the old school one, like the yellow one that was down in camps here? Were you in the newer one? Yeah. Newer one? Let me see. Fucking... I used to... If, if I was meeting So it friends, all went to Fox and Nev took it. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I was meeting up with friends, like, you know whenever you're like fucking 16 and you think it's like the dog's duck, you get to go into the town by yourself? 
that's where I would meet my friends. We have made it extroversion. Oh, that's the spot. It was a social glue, I'm telling you. The amount of couples that just fucking separated like a hooker's legs just whenever they walked in. It had a smell too. Did. It had a smell that I haven't smelt since. Yeah. Then it, it Nev. It was Nev. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. It was a mixture of popcorn and and uh, adolescence. Yeah. It was like breadcrumb ball bag. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that would definitely get you voted back in. There's no doubt about that. Right. Hello, Arn. This is from the Nash man. Uh, Patty Nash is in. I love that there's a hint of sadness in your comedy, like a young Robin Williams. Oh, for Jesus all the madness Christ. out there, it's people like you and Mickey and that bad bastard Keys that keeps me seeing, keeps shining. Ah, uh, that's one of the nicest things anyone's ever said. I appreciate be, what do you that? see what's going to happen now? Patty, I'm just going to let you know. Arn McCann's poster will have. Like a young Robin Williams, Paddy Nash. <laughs> that's a, that's a quote. That's a quote he's going to use. I hate to tell you, but uh, unfortunately for you, my mental health's actually pretty good at the moment. <laughs> so. Unfor- but, unfortunately, I'm doing all right. But there'll be someone around the corner, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, well, thank I you, Paddy, That is always. very kind. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, right. Well, lads, what American restaurant, chain, or food shop would you like to see open up over here? Oh, now you've got me. That's a great question. Um, now, if I was going by chain, you're talking Olive Garden or Chili's? I would go so Olive Garden in the same branch, under the same family, under the same umbrella. I would get the Cheesecake Factory out here. Oh, I fuck it. Sir, That's I tell you, the first time I had that birthday cake cheesecake and I was high, it was literally like one of them videos where a guy sees in colour for the first time in like 45 years. Aye. I was emotional. If I had to seen that, I would have cried. I, I cried at them videos. I heard Celine Dion in my head. <laughs> it was magic. I loved it. It was great. I remember my girlfriend that I was talking about before, um, at the time, my, my ex now, like, but at the time we were uh, we were having a breakup. Mm-hmm. And she was that this bitch was about to break up with me in the cheesecake factory, and I said, "Don't you fucking dare Don't take this away from me. Here, yeah. We will do this in the car. Yeah. Do not do this while I'm sitting here eating a fucking not a chance. Oh, that, that's evil. That's that is, is evil. Evil. You ever like? Have you ever had a breakup and they fuck up someone for you, like songs or anything like that? Or two women? Okay. Two women. Yeah. Well, has the first woman fucked up anything for you? No. No. Because I, I I finished her. Number two is. So no. <laughs> you ever had that, Nev? You ever had something like a a past flame, like fuck up something you like? I have a few songs I can't listen to. Oh, I would never let. Oh no, I would never give away my songs to, to another fucking woman. Yeah, I learned that lesson. Oh, that's a fucking. Also, can't watch that film. Uh, what is it, Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga? The Conjuring. No. No. <laughs> No, very different. The one with creepers. A star is born. Yeah, that one. I right. can't. I. I can't. Any version of it? No, and there's a soundtrack of it and everything. I no, can't. the the like the other four versions of it. Have you watched? Uh, the, you can't watch the old ones either. I was born 1994, so I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, that's getting you back for earlier when you said I was no younger a young boy. That hurt. You're wanker. Uh. <laughs> Yes, there was three versions before this one. This is the fourth remake of A Star Is Born. I can't believe you tried to call me a nerd for like a professional wrestling and you know that there's three Star Is Borns before the Star Is Born. Or maybe two before. Everyone three. knows. How you didn't watch the Barbara Streisand one? I don't know. Sweet fuck, do you have you even lived? Generation gap. <laughs> uh, well, Connor, I saw you in Letter Kenny on Friday. Great stuff. Poor Trendy Randy. Great stuff. <laughs> Tell me what happened there. I can't, because that's part of me set. Uh, <laughs> I, was ju- <laughs> I was just wondering, what's the best way to keep up to date with dates for your shows, Arn? Uh, I, I don't worry about mine. I don't, I, <laughs> I don't have a... I actually have a friend that's going to do a website for me, because she says she's sick of the fact that I don't have one, so I might be getting a website soon. There's a, a bit of exclusive <laughs> news. Um, right now, just my Instagram. And if you're looking for a show to go to, 24th of June... Waterfront Hall, big, uh, right here. 24th of June, Waterfront Hall. Biggest show I've ever done. I'm very nervous and excited about it. I would love to have you there. Thank you very much. I love it. See, that's what we try to get my kid to do every week and he keeps fucking forgetting. To <laughs> Not to promote your shows, but <laughs> yeah. just to promote his own. Uh, right. Um, what would Aaron's choice of album, movie, or TV show if he wasn't best of the best again? Oh, because you did title title the creator for us the last time, so if I was to do it again, I would do I would change genre, so I would do film and okay. I would do Whiplash. Oh. 
It's my favorite film ever made. That's a fucking show and a half. It's the only. Sh- it's the only film that I've watched. I think I've watched it seventeen times now. Wow. Which is I don't do that with anything else. I can't watch a film. I think more the than last f- I remember being on that. The last film I uh, was obsessed with like that, where where I genuinely have watched more than twenty plus times, was Heat. Heat. I've never uh, seen Heat. Back in uh, when I was ninety five, ninety six. So I, I want to come out because it was. It was the first time Pacino and De Niro had been together on screen and all, you know, and everything about it then was just, and I just... I Should I add that it, to the watch list? I idolized it. Yeah, that's a fucking belter of a show. Do you yeah. ever seen that? I have Yeah. Have you seen show. Whiplash? I haven't, no. Oh, oh sir. as a musician, how have you not watched Whiplash? Sir, you gotta... Although I have heard that uh, musicians critique it, like... Yeah, but it's... Because it's like, not an accurate portrayal, no. and I'm like, well... It is a film. It is a film. Yeah, you know. it's a film. It's not going to be. Uh, no, you got to watch it. That's a fucking. I, I, I kind of was a wee bit like yourself. I remember going, I don't know if I like this. And, don't, and genuinely, the only reason I watched, watched it because it was because J.K. Simmons. He's a fucking I didn't know, unbelievable I didn't know actor, who Miles, T- Miles Teller was at the time when I was watching. This so. thing, Miles Teller, before that, I'd only ever seen him as like a kind of go-to rom-com guy. He was in a lot yeah, of Jack Flicks. Didn't know anything And then him. he did that, and I was like, this guy kind of act like a Then I'm like, I want to ride him. Yeah, he's a sexy bastard. He is a sexy fuck. Did you see The Offer? I haven't seen The Offer. Oh, it's the story of how The Godfather was made. The movie. You were telling me about this. This so is what I need to watch. Ten episodes of Miles Teller plays the, the producer. On What's it on? Movie. Firestick? Uh, 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 Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. <laughs> yeah. Who uh, the fuck's paying for that? No wonder these boys are fucking breaking <laughs> fire sticks. You some fucking nerve, Paramount, to release your own streaming service. <laughs> Name me five great Paramount shows right now. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Hateful bastards. Although they're bringing back Frasier. Which I'm kind of happy about. I don't know what it's going to be like, but. See, Fraser to me would have been a show that, like, it would have been in the same category as, like, an Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah. Whereby I would have watched it while I was uh, getting ready for yeah, primary for, school. For school, yeah. Uh, but still a great show. I remember, uh, that's how old I am, I watched them live. It was live? Well, what they used to be out each week, every episode each week. Like, oh, all right, yeah. okay, okay. Oh, yeah, you're about that? Yeah. That's what was that, like? Old school. 1920-something? Was that? Like, ballpark? Like right that time. How much? What right, was next, worse, COVID or the Spanish flu? How much? <laughs> how much of a cunt is a hand? <laughs> that's a weird. That's a funny question. <laughs> there, that's the time, hey, have you seen the sunlight since McCann? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see what the rest of this is. What is that object in the sky? No, that's just that's all about <laughs> You're a cunt too. Uh, <clears throat> oh, you're a bastard. Right, is your broadband as fast as fibrous? Is that someone that works for Fibrous? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I respect the hustle. Fair play to you. Like, if you get prints, if you get commission list, I want some. Like, that's yeah. fucking unreal. Our broadband right now actually isn't the best, to be fair. So if you want to, again, reach out, you know. Ours is, is, is bad, but that's, I've always said they do that on purpose. We have the fucking when you're, BT when your area like, when the area you live in is ready for an upgrade, you'll notice your broadband starting to be shit. Yeah, ours is like ours is like to the point where Netflix is buffering the odd time. And what do you see now? I bet you if you were to go and click in, can I get fiber to the premises? It's now available in your area. Well, they do it all the time. They bottleneck at the cons. Uh, right, what can be done to stop them protesters at events like the national and now the snooker? I'm all for protesting the right cause, but do these woke warriors not realize the clothes on their back or the phones they use were probably made by an eight-year-old in a factory in China? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you schooled them there. Yeah, absolutely. That's weird on the, the snooker one. Do you see that? I've seen that with the orange powder. Oh, man, what? That's, yeah. yeah. Um, now, in fairness, I know like balls do get hit hard, right? Yeah. And, you know, they shouldn't be treated that way. I agree. And, and maybe they need to have, you know, their own wee space and stuff and they shouldn't be dropped the way they are, but come on. The powder, the like, powder was pretty mad. That's like you covered the balls in powder. Yeah. So it's like fucking protesting against you know the abuse of children and then fucking fire fire over the children. You know what I mean? Don't be doing that. Yeah. Fucking if you want to save the balls, they they did the Formula away. One too. I think they did the Grand they National. Did they, f- the, did they do Formula One as well? Yeah, they sat down the track and then they were mm. very uh, gently removed from the track. Mm. Like here's the thing, right? This is controversial now. I can get why they're protesting Formula One. Because they want to stop oil. I can sort of get the Grand National. Horse. What the fuck is snooker? Got the- 
what fucking oil is the chalk for the snooker cue made out of oil or something? I don't. What, or was I, it just because it was a live broadcast? And I think. Yeah, it, yeah, I think it's more of a case of like you know, if I if I was a protester, right, if I had something that I cared about, God, I wish I had something I cared about. But uh, <laughs> like, I feel like if I was to pick an event where the security just wouldn't be that tight, out of them, out of them things, it'd probably be the snooker. <laughs> You know what I would say to the cons? This is my message I told them. Try it at a fucking darts concert. Aye. Go to the darts show and see if you can get away with that fucking shit. You'll yeah. be fucking battered before you can get near oh, the fucking will, front. Aye. You will. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, I, I genuinely, I'll tinfoil starts tingling when I see them sort of stupid protests. You know, like ones I got that aren't really very effective, don't really have an end goal, don't really have a realistic target. They just come out with a, a blanket statement like, just stop oil. Like, yeah. oh yeah, we'll just stop. Just completely, you know, we're not going to phase it out. There was a lot I, of them in the, London. <clears throat> the tinfoil gets me, and I think that's that's baby steps towards us not being allowed to protest ever again. Yeah. And because the thing is now, if they were to bring in a law today to stop protesting, most of the country would be behind it because of them cons. Yeah. So I always think... Mm. You ever been to a protest? <laughs> yeah. Quite a few. Don't forget, I'm 90s child. Oh, yeah. Hunter's Crescent had a lot of protests. Yeah. We had a white line protest one time out in the middle of the road, and then the Police bit us off the fucking road. Bastards. Um, you ever been to a women's march? Yep. Because my ma was heavily involved with the Women's Coalition back in... Because 25 years ago when the Good Friday Agreement was signed, Women's Coalition were kind of like the the only women's party as such, but they were kind of very... I know this is going to sound controversial, but I believe the women are the reason why there's a peace process even happened. As always, most good things happen uh, with women around the kitchen table. Yeah, <laughs> they usually get things started. That's what happened. They want like I think a couple of the the uh, I can't remember her name Nell McLafferty maybe or a couple of women and only basically around ninety three or ninety four was like this has to fucking stop. You know, you know, and there was a more of a more of a buy in from them. You know yeah. what I mean? And so they they end up coming. So yeah, I've been to a few women's. Mar- I'm talking 20, 20 years ago, twenty two years ago, whatever. Like yeah, uh, I didn't go to one this weekend. In fairness. There was one in Belfast, but I think that was a bit controversial. There was protests on their side. <coughs> I haven't been to any protests since I went to the storm of the Capitol. Oh, I have time to stand away ever since, yeah. That was you carrying the podium, wasn't it? I, <laughs> I was the podium. <laughs> He's my head of it. <laughs> you want to get them riled up? <laughs> uh, right, second question. <sighs> the fuck is being greedy? Been seeing a lot of videos of just casual shoplifting in America. People not even trying to hide it. Just walking out the row of piles of clothes and the staff doing I nothing. I've seen that. What's what is going on in the world or where is it headed if stuff that guess can happen with no consequences? Well, my mom has been saying the world's and it's led. For, like, I'd say it's dramatically increased since COVID. She says the world's fucked. Uh, uh, again, the tinfoil will get tingling with me. Uh, so you have two things going on. You've got people who don't care anymore. Mm-hmm. And then you have police who don't care anymore. And when those two things happen, so one doesn't want to enforce the law, another one doesn't care about the law, you're just going to have lawlessness. But that's not to say you want the cops going out and fucking being strict. There's a, there's a balance there. But I do believe this is going to lead us to the Amazon shops. Yeah, there was one of them in London. Again, Hum- I was just like... Humanless shops. So you won't get in through the door. The barrier won't open unless your fingerprints or your uh, uh, face scan is done. So that means... Oh, my God. Because that I mean ultimately, say for instance, you're one of these looters, and you you walk up to the shop, you won't get in unless your face is registered, which is linked to your debit card. So then the shop is like, "Well, you take whatever you want. We're going to charge you for it when you leave." You ever stole anything? So next up, would McCann Except for the people's hearts? <laughs> stole a lot. Yeah. I tried to steal a, a, we had a guest in our podcast in London, Nick Dirt Civil, and the guest talked about how she had like a long history of shoplifting. Hmm. And like me and Tim were bewildered by it, because up until that point, we'd never stole anything. That's your middle class, I was like. Yeah. yeah. And um, I was like, Jesus, that's mad. And then I went to, went to a Tesco, and uh, you know, it was fresh in my head. I was thinking about it. Money wasn't great at the time. Mm-hmm. Living in London, you know, a lot of overheads, a lot of fees, and uh, I had I had two cheese twists, mm-hmm. put in the bag, went to the self checkout, only put in one. Oh, you fucking! And then literally the red alarm went off, and the guy came over, and I was like, I don't know what, oh, I don't know what happened, and he was like, Oh, it says here you put in one instead of two, and I was like, What? Well, I mean, 
I don't know how that would have happened, and I I still haven't done it ever since. Can leave one there behind. There's only enough for one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, it would have been my forte in school. I'd have been one of the best. What shop. would you go for? BPL Usually an ice cream or Snickers. Or, of course. Yeah, because the school blazers, magnificent for theft. Oh, yeah, they are. Fucking tailor-made? Tailor-made, pockets all over the place. You know what I mean? And then long sleeves. So what I'm... I shouldn't be teaching this to you, by the way. But what I would be reaching in and lifting out like a twister, this hand would be going in and flicking a Snickers ice cream up the sleeve of the blazer and then lift my hand and go fuck it and then slap it in the pocket down the side and then go ah no I'm not bother that's and craftsmanship yeah. that now that's, that's a fucking uh, skill boy. it's, it's type stuff, skill that, that shit deflection at all times free game please well is that a paywall but yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right would McCann be game for taking a joint and doing a pod with yums would love to see a fuck around and find out episode with a few vegetarian cigarettes yeah, if you'd like to see a man get schizophrenia on a podcast, sure, I'll smoke with you anytime. <laughs> no, I think I think it, it would either be, I think if I had to use a shaman walking me through the minefield, I think I'd be all right. Because uh, uh, that is the thing. If, you don't, if you're not used to it and you don't take it, I mean, you're, you're, it's your head that does all the, the, the crazy thoughts and all the rest. But yeah. there's something there with you to keep you going, no, that's yeah. natural and that's what's supposed to happen. That's, you know. I'd be like, um, we can never, the room he's trying to kill me. <laughs> Something about his demeanor. I feel like he's he going to looking. Uh, he's going to slit my throat. Dude. He's looking at something up there. I don't know what it is, but he's looking at something. Why is there three cameras? Where are you putting this? <laughs> mm, weird. Who's, who's the third person? <laughs> is that for Pedro? <laughs> is he talking about me? Dexter Young's on Pedro. I don't know if I can have a whole family at the one time. Uh, I would love to do that. I would love to do a, a 420 pod. Have you ever done a high podcast? It must be two days time. Fucking is, so we can't do it this year. Um, have you ever done a high podcast? Oh, yeah, I've met you, so that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will never... George Best level. Like, I'll never forget this quote. Coming over from my gig with Keezy, and he, you were chatting about gigging high, and I was like, man, have you ever done a gig not high? And you just took a big out of the joint and went, sir, you haven't met me yet. You haven't met me sober. <laughs> Uh, no point lying about it. Top things, <laughs> top ten things you want to hear as a passenger in a car. <laughs> <laughs> I would never smoke and drive. Obviously, no, you of know course. that. Of obviously. course, <laughs> I'm well aware of that. What? I'm well aware of that. I'm yeah. well aware of that, sir. Uh, <laughs> hi, Connor and Arn. <clears throat> hello. Sorry for, hello, hi, Connor and Arn. Hope you're both having a good week. Since Mickey is away, and he said before he doesn't listen to podcasts, it'll be safe to answer. What annoys you lads most about him? Favourite pod ever. P.S. Can't wait to see Boston at the waterfront. Can I ask who's doing support? Thank you very much. Uh, Yums and McCarney, please, as they're saying here. I, I'm going to keep that one under the wraps. Ooh, nice. But it's going to be good. Nice. Um, you know who's, I know who's going to be. What's my least favourite thing about Mikey? Or what annoys me the most? I wouldn't be a big fan of... <laughs> Of the interruptions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to lie to you. Just because I would struggle sometimes <laughs> when I'm on a thought path. Yeah. That if I'm taking off that path, I'm not getting back on it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what causes that. Maybe it's That's the reefer, folks. <laughs> so when he, do, like, and, and I'll be sitting here listening to him and I'm not really reacting to him because I'm going, keep the thought, keep the thought, keep yeah. the thought. And then it's gone. I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah. it's gone. Sorry. And then he's on the fucking five minute fucking new set just been created right in front of me. Yeah. Uh but no, I mean it, it genuinely is so easy to get along with. Like it's no Yeah, I'm I'm honestly like I'm trying to think what fucks me off Ben Mickey. Probably like like he is very good at convincing you to go on the rip. Oh yeah. But like, I've I become immune to it. No. He's very easy to get on the rip. Yeah. But on the other side of that coin, like I have won out before and I'm like, there's not a fucking chance you'll yeah. get me out of the door and he won't give up until you're out. He has tried, he's learned now not to try it with me anymore. I am so steadfast when I say no, I'm not. Cause I, I, I'll like Manchester was a good example. I had a flight at 11 in the morning, which means I had to leave the hotel at eight. And if I just know myself, if I drink, I'm not waking him. There's no fucking alarm in this world would wake me. And even with the eyebrows, I'm going, oh, well, 
Hmm? Yeah. Right. You know that one? He's sitting in the glass and going, mm-hmm. Yeah, you got and, them Jim uh, one slugs oh, out. And he got the right and go ahead. And I'm like, no, I'm fucking not. Yeah, I'm fucking. Uh, and yeah, he just decided, well, I'll have to drink it myself. Then. <laughs> but you know like, what's, That's what you want in the first place. But know? that's good that you do that, though, because see if you if you slept up once or he got through the cracks. Oh, that's it. Now he knows that he can do that. Yeah, no. My friends in America think I have willpower. Because I went out there and I was like, let me try and be this person that says no and means no. Yeah. And I've managed to keep that up. But my friends over here know they can crack me if oh, they keep at it. Oh. They know that I'll fold. You know, if, they're, if the environment's right, yeah. you know, you're going to be done. Look here. Uh, <clears throat> right. Okay. So, uh, see, when I first read this, can't wait to see Busted at the waterfront. I was like, do we have fans who are going to see Busted? <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't realize that's no, all right. Uh, right, this might be a bit of a question for just wrapping on, but not too crazy, so we could probably get away with it. This is right for people that have bought tickets. I'm fucking ecstatic. Get uh, off my back, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> it's selling fine. <laughs> Here, what's the thoughts on the Mandela effect? I've long thought it's a purposeful act, but some organization to make us constantly doubt ourselves. What's your favorite Mandela effect you know has changed from when you were younger? I remember reading a list of them one time. They're all like real like stupid things like, you know, like a letter that wasn't there or like, yeah, dumb shit like that. But nothing that I've been like, holy fuck. No, we t- I think we talked about this, me and Mickey last week. I remember seeing the, and it wasn't a Mandela effect. It's just it happened to be, so it was Demolition Man, the movie. And in one week it's, or in one version it's Pizza Hut that they read and the other one is Taco Bell. And I remember seeing, but there is a reason for both. It was, it was different uh property rights or something okay so but these are two sap but these are two separate films that could no be- that's the exact same film but but what they've di- what they've done is when they showed it in europe they changed the branding of the restaurant they were attacking okay in, in the movie so two separate scenes in the one film no see it's the same scene in both there's two separate companies they're attacking right no i don't know in 1990 whatever that was six or seven what cga had to be used to change the logos and all the rest or because it's definitely not too uh different shots been uh, made or two different versions so uh it turned out it was a property rights thing but that's the only one where i remember watching it going no 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 i fucking definitely seen that with taco bell like there's no way that's pizza hut like and it turned out there was two different things but that's yeah. different the mandela effect is you've been told something you believe something and then you go back and the whole time it's been wrong yeah like that thing of uh what do you call the guy oh uh, some bad was in allegedly in a, a movie it's not called Shazam because that's a new one, but it's something like that. And I remember, is it Kazam? Oh, it was Shaq, wasn't it? Shaq was in that, but there's another one. And this is a Mandela effect too that the movie doesn't exist, but so many people are like, I remember having the tape of it. I remember having, and Simbad has come out and went, I wasn't in a film called that, <laughs> but so many people in their head believe they have seen it. And I remember myself thinking, I think I have seen that fucking thing. Yeah, that's weird. But when the actor was like, goes, I wasn't in a film. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, well, maybe the actor might know. You never know. Uh, so yeah, the Mandela effect, I don't know. There's Because um, it actually came from, that's what I don't get about the whole thing. came that's from Mandela. Mandela. But it came, like, I just can't get over the fact that there, that there was enough of the population that thought he died. Yeah. So they missed all the fucking South African rugby thing. They missed all the, you know, when he was released from prison, then he became the president. They became, so that was all, to them, that didn't exist or something. I don't understand what that, what that's supposed to be. I don't know what the Mandela effect was there. Anyway, well, we'll come on <laughs> to see you, your eyes glazing over there. I was like, right, let's move on. Uh, Connor, hats off to you for the solo Just Rabbit On episode. You pull it off well. That being the second one you've done, any chance of some more solo just wrapping on? It's nice to hear someone saying what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, there probably will be between now and Mickey coming back. I would say I'd have to do another one at some point. There's not much fucking shit happening. So, yeah, I'll be back sometime. Right. Hello, boys. This is the med. The medic is in. And she's got a very sultry voice. Hello, boys. She knows you know. Whenever, the medic. whenever you go on holiday, are you the type of person to go with the flow and take each day as it comes? Or are you super yes. organized and have each day planned out in advance to get the most out of the place you're in? No. I'm the latter. I'm, I'm organized as fuck. No, I'm not. I've, I, I've researched for weeks beforehand. And I think that's an age thing. I think it's because so many times I've went and wasted fucking days. Well, or wasted time or got lost because I was looking for somewhere and I didn't have looked at it in advance. You know, just loads of reasons. And then now I'm like, no, 
I need to know where I'm going. But see, to be fair... I don't have an itinerary or anything, but I just know <clears throat> this is what we're going to be doing that day or whatever. The last few places that I've been to visit for the first time, I have, like, comics that I know out there, like, friends. So I don't because I know they're going to cut free all the bullshit yeah. and bring me to the places that they're like, no, this is, like, the real whatever yeah. in terms of food and bars and shit like that. Austin last year, we didn't re- research a fucking thing. And, like, just a day of, like, wandering about the streets, I found, like, amazing bars, food, like, all that mm-hmm. shit. But, I mean, it you doesn't hurt to do a bit of research. The whole like, day was wasted trying to find something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I like walking. Yeah. Uh, especially in a city. I could walk for hours. I wouldn't walk in length of myself here in town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but take me away to the city and I'm away just watching people and looking at, as you say, looking at pubs, looking at different Yeah, I love that stuff. shit too. But I, I like to have an idea of what's going on around me. And that's just because, as I say, I went so many places and like a full day wasted of going, I don't know where I should be getting the boat from this. Or should be get, you know, all that stuff can be done beforehand if you because we have the internet. So I would never. I suppose things... you've never traveled pre internet? No. Nope. I remember being in America when I was like 12 or 13, like, and I wasn't alone, obviously. But I remember not having a clue where anything is. Yeah, it's And bad. now you're like, I can see the map of the fucking town on my phone. I can go exactly where I want to go. Uh, so yeah, okay. So you just take it. You would know the shade of me. Yeah, I just go with the one. Or actually, it would maybe not know. Maybe you'd be a perfect partner because I'd have it all organized. Oh, like, this is where we're you going. You would be my ideal person to go to Hollywood with because I'm like I'm just going to do whatever he's doing. Yeah. Uh, right. History is riddled with stories of people being gay and lesbian. Mm-hmm. There was a point through that that most societies outlawed it. Now with trans and the like, do you think the door will ever swing back the other way and remove all those rights again as it did in the past? I hope, of course, it doesn't. But what do you think? I don't think so. I, I, I don't know. I can't see I it. don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, I, w- w- there is, like, danger fucking minefield stuff. You know, you, wanna, you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that. I think that's going to change. I think that has to change somewhere online. Not not about these topics, but in topics in general. Like this thing, you can't say that. Yeah. That's only going to lead to very, very bad times. <laughs> yeah. I also, I have, I have a gay friend, Arteza, and he was telling me, he was like, yeah, it's less fun to be gay now because like it used to feel dangerous. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Absolutely, He's like, yeah. now, now it's like socially acceptable. He's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Burger King's changing their logo to the fucking flag. <laughs> you know what I mean? like it's mainstream but, now it's not cool it. anymore yeah but then, and that's there probably was that we there would have been of course that hidden thrill because especially if you think of Tyrone the amount of, of gay men who had to hide mm. you know and then there was secret weed you know, there probably was a thrill to that whole thing and yeah then now it's absolutely fucking, the thrill's gone you're like oh fuck it's just me and Dave yeah <laughs> oh balls man Dave Elliott is not a gay man. He is happily <laughs> married to a lovely wife, Catherine. Me, me and Dave are bisexual, sorry. <laughs> I bias. Yeah, we're bisexual. Just the bias. Just the bias. Uh, right, last one, I think, unless I refresh it here. Uh, and Oh, it's a doozy. Yums, any chance of getting Tom Smith on the podcast? Oh, why? No. We wouldn't be able to afford him. <laughs> That's the reason why we wouldn't go looking for him. Um, you know, winners win. They do. Yeah, scammer scam. You know what I mean. That's just the way it works. That's just the <laughs> the life we live. <laughs> That's it. That's all we have to do. Yeah, I remember when we tried to for Dirt Civil. We tried to phone up a, like a life coach, mm-hmm. but it was there's a guy. Ah, oh, he's a really famous one too, like the OG, Tony Robbins. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a Netflix documentary yep. called "I Am Not Your Guru." And for for the crack, I tried to schedule. Um, so he is like a full, like he has a full company where it's a bunch of lifestyle coaches that work for him. Mm-hmm. So I tried to get one to ring me on the podcast, and they didn't ring me in the podcast. They rang me like an hour later, which is unprofessional, <laughs> first of all. Um, but I had the phone call when I got home when I was chatting to this guy, and like they do really entice you. Like it's very like you know like when you're chatting to someone like that and you're talking about they're like what do you want to do and stuff like that and I was like fuck you know what maybe I will actually sign up to this guy and then <laughs> he was like okay so you know it starts off with a down payment of 20k and I was like sir I have a three grand overdraft of Danske Bank right now I have about 27 pound in my bank account I was like I can't afford to improve <laughs> 
And I don't give a fuck what anybody says. If you've twenty k lying about to go to give to a life coach, yeah. your life's all right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't need guided yeah. in any way. You know what I mean? All you're doing is just literally wasting that excess cash you have. But it, it's so funny, like the the switch in the cadence when I told this fella I have no money. It's like whenever you go to a strip club, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, maybe we could just do one song, and they're like, you broke bitch, fuck <laughs> off. Like, he was like, I just want to help you, man. I just, my life has been since I started. I just want to help people. I want people to see their dreams and their goals. And then I was like, any chance you could do it for 40 pounds? <laughs> and he's like, don't waste my time. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The joys of the uh, the modern self-help person who does only helps himself. Yeah. I uh, think I'd like one, though. Like, if I had a guy uh, that, like, if mm-hmm. I had a guy, that, like, once a week, I like check in with him and he's like, have you actually been a decent human being this week and tried mm. to improve your life in any way? I could see that, but I couldn't afford that. I, I have that. I He's here in the shoulder, but the other cunt over here is the one I listen to the most. He's the one fucking, don't worry about that fucking cunt. He's always up to doing, he's always motivated and all. And the fuck's sake, you do your head in. My ma's a bit of a life coach, you know. <laughs> Come home from a gig, she's like, how much does that pay? <laughs> here. The Mrs. McCann fucking uh, knows the rules. She knows the crack. <laughs> She's been about showbiz fucking long enough to know. Exactly. <laughs> your dog got that exactly. question. How much did that pay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and how much did you spend? <laughs> 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 so in other words, what did you come home with? <laughs> I wish I wish that I was like, whatever vision my doll has of me in her head, I wish I was that in real life. Because according to her, I should only be strictly doing stadiums. <laughs> Here. It's not... If, uh, as every good ma should be. Alone, my ma doesn't do that right now. But uh, <laughs> every every good ma should do that. Yeah, every good ma should give your your child all the the portion, all the rest. Oh, my ma is like, have you seen that air film yet? Where it's it's about Nike trying to close the deal. With oh, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. So like the ma and that like the the she's like the she's the head honcho. Mm-hmm. Like Michael Jordan's too young to fucking do anything. The dad doesn't know what the fuck's going on. He's just having to be there. The man is like the businesswoman, yeah. very strict, very fucking down. Yeah. And uh, no spoilers, kinda, but there's a part in the film where I mean, it's it's literally what we're living in right now. So I mean, like hmm. the, the woman rings up Nike and she's like, "I want my son to get um, a, a cut of every shoe that's sold." <laughs> and the guy's like, "Man, we can't. Like, this is just the business. This we don't do that. Like, that's literally impossible." And then she's like, "Well." Them shoes mean nothing until my son steps into them. You know? That's what ma's are for. Yeah. That's the fuck. Except for my ma, of course. Who I happen to say as a little humble brag, you know, uh, the last time I was doing the Ulster Hall, I was like, you know what? This is my 12th time being on that stage. She was like, I always surprise me. I'd never the bride. I was like, thanks, ma. My ma's, my ma's the same with my weight and, and vapes right now, the new thing. Anything that's wrong with me at all? She's like, I'm vapes are fucking up your head. Aye. And then the weight thing is, she, she she gives me a hard time about my weight, nonstop. She's a bully. <laughs> she body shame me all the time. Yeah. Oh, body shaming, unbelievable. Deadly, unbelievable. Here's the thing: imagine the size you'd be if it wasn't for your ref. You know what I mean? I think I'd be dead. I think I'd be like that guy, the whale. <laughs> you seen the whale? I haven't. No, I'm afraid in case it triggers me or some way. I want to see uh, it just for the intro. <laughs> Apparently, he's just like wanking off the gay porn and has a heart attack. Deadly. Thank fucking rock magic. and roll. Yeah, what a way to go or come, <laughs> whatever you <laughs> come and go. <laughs> right. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Thanks for sending the questions. If you haven't sent us a question before, please do send them in. We're always very delighted to see from first time commenters. Uh, until then, twenty fourth of June, twentieth of May, yes. Mandela Hall. Uh, get your tickets, get sorted, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you very much, Mister McCann. Thanks for having me, man. Pleasure. Bye.